the January cabinet shuffle had absolutely nothing to do with SNC-Lavalin. In fact, I spent at least as much time working to prevent the shuffle from happening as in preparing my advice for it. On December the 12th, Minister Bryson approached me and Ms. Telford to tell us he was not running again and that he would tell the Prime Minister later that day. The Minister said he didn't have to leave Cabinet right away, but that he was going to tell his constituents two or three days later. We did all we could to dissuade him, to take Christmas to, take Christmas to think about it, and at least give the Prime Minister a chance to talk him out of it. It would trigger a Cabinet shuffle, and the Prime Minister was happy with the team he had. I immediately sought help from people who know Minister Bryson well to talk him out of it at home in Nova Scotia and here in Ottawa. We spent the next couple of weeks trying to get him to stay. Not to give away political strategy in this form, but my main political concern was our position in Nova Scotia. Mr. Casey had announced his retirement and Mr. Fraser had told us he was thinking of not running again, but he had not yet announced. I knew that if the Prime Minister chose a minister from the class of 2015, Mr. Kuzner and Mr. Eiking could interpret that as a signal and perhaps not run again either. In short, in the span of a few months, we would go from holding all 11 seats in Nova Scotia with strong incumbents to having five of them open in the next election. Minister Bryson's departure would put us in a difficult position. Nobody is irreplaceable in government, but Minister Bryson was very important to our team. Neither the Prime Minister nor anyone around him wanted a cabinet shuffle to happen at all. Why is this all so important? If Minister Bryson had not resigned, Minister Wilson-Raybould would still be Minister of Justice today. That is a fact, and facts are very stubborn things. Cabinet selections are among the most difficult tasks for any First Minister. I've advised two First Ministers on 13 of them. They're all unique. In this case, the Prime Minister would have just a handful of days to factor in all of these complex considerations. And I can say to you with absolute certainty that SNC-Lavalin was not one of them. The Prime Minister directed us to think about options over the holidays, just in case. He told us he wanted to move the fewest number of people possible. He said he had done his pre-election cabinet shuffle in the summer and wanted to minimize the disruption he reminded us the Treasury Board is an important job that few people outside Ottawa understand, but that it was vital for the basic functions of government. So we came back after Christmas to the news that Minister Bryson would indeed resign. This left us two large challenges. We needed a Nova Scotia minister and a Treasury Board chair with ministerial experience. No Nova Scotian except Mr. Regan had been a minister before, and he is the Speaker of the House of Commons. All signs pointed to Minister Philpott moving to Treasury Board. She had been vice chair, so she had the experience to do the job. The Prime Minister agreed with this, but he was worried about the signal it would send to Indigenous people. This, to me, is the saddest part of this whole story. Indigenous people have been sent precisely the opposite message from, from the one the Prime Minister intended. The most valuable thing in any government is the First Minister's time. The Prime Minister spends a lot of his on Indigenous issues. A lot. He cares about the relationship deeply. He was preoccupied with the fact that we had the Child and Family Services legislation coming up. He thought it would be one of the most important bills that the government would pass. He wanted a person in Indigenous services who would send a strong signal that the work would keep going at the same pace and that the file would have the same personal prominence for him. The right, and perhaps only person, who could do that was Minister Wilson Raybould. The Prime Minister knew there were several capable and experienced lawyers in caucus. The short list for justice included several eminent lawyers with good backgrounds, including David Lametti. The Prime Minister chose Mr. Lametti because he is a distinguished McGill Law professor with graduate degrees from Yale, and Oxford. He was also aware that it would raise, raise eyebrows if he had three ministers and very large portfolios who all represented ridings on the subway line in downtown Toronto. That was the context in which the Prime Minister made the decision to move Minister Wilson-Raybould. 
It had nothing whatsoever to do with SNC-Lavalin. So the plan was a simple one, Mr. Chair. Philpot to Treasury Board, Wilson Raybould to Indigenous Services, bring Lametti into justice and Jordan into the new rural affairs portfolio that caucus had been lobbying for. It was a simple plan for a small, tidy shuffle. The situation started to change on the weekend of January 5th. The Prime Minister spoke to Minister Philpott in person, one-on-one, -on -one in his office on Sunday the 6th. The Prime Minister de debriefed us right afterward. He said Minister Philpott was excited by the challenge, especially the digital government aspects of her new file. She said Minister Wilson-Raybould was an excellent choice for Indigenous services, but worried she would see it as a demotion. Minister Philpott then told the Prime Minister that she worried that Minister Wilson-Raybould might wonder if her move were connected to the DPA issue. That was the first time I ever heard anyone suggest that this cabinet shuffle was in any way related to the SNC-Lavalin file.